Hi everybody, today I am presenting the Gatekeeper stack. Gatekeeper's purpose is to restrict access to web pages or parts of web pages, and it does so by making use of time based one time passwords. Gatekeeper is the ideal drop in if you do not want or need a full blown user password based access control system. Gatekeeper takes this even a step further and you don't even need to remember a PIN or a password. As I mentioned, Gatekeeper uses time-based one-time passwords, which means that you have an app on your smartphone, such as Authy or Google Authenticator or something which is compatible to these two, which you synchronize once with Gatekeeper and from then on, the software takes care of the rest. Gatekeeper checks the user's entry, whether this is a valid password or not. And this check is performed locally on your web server. It changes the password every 30 seconds, although there is a grace period so that the user has a little bit more time to enter a valid password. It provides, provides a page in preview where you can synchronize your smartphone app with your Gatekeeper installation. It provides another preview page where you can generate secret keys locally on your computer. It makes sure that no confidential data is loaded into the visitor's web browser unless there has been a successful login. It can work as a central login page for multiple web pages or it can, you can implement it in the way that you have several login pages for several web pages and therefore you can create individually secured areas for different teams. For example, for marketing and one for finance and so on and so on. It also handles graceful logout and it provides a lot of settings for you to make it compatible with your personal layout. Let's have a quick look at how Gatekeeper works and how it is integrated in Rapid Weaver. Right, now we have Rapid Weaver in front of us and uh, this is an empty project where we will implement a simple uh, Gatekeeper application or web page. All right, you can see Gatekeeper consists of these three stacks, which you can see here in uh, the list. First of all is, of course, the Gatekeeper stack itself. Then we have a sign out stack, which helps us to facilita facilitate the logout. And lastly, we have the Stack Keeper uh, stack. <laughs> uh, I will show you how to use the latter two in a sec. But let's first start with Gatekeeper itself. If you start a project with Gatekeeper, it is always helpful if you put Gatekeeper, the Gatekeeper stack at the top of your stacks list. By the way, Gatekeeper works with all frameworks out there, so it doesn't matter what you choose. What I'm going to demonstrate it with is, of course, my platform framework, which I developed and also sell. Uh, but again, it works with all frameworks which are available currently on the market. All right, uh, here we see the Gatekeeper stack itself. And if I want to show something after the login has uh, been successful, I just put it in underneath. And if I wanted to play, to work with a framework, um, I put the framework uh, settings stack right underneath Gatekeeper as the second stack. And fr from then on, you can basically compose your page as you are used to. I'll just drop in a content stack so that we see something once we have logged in in our example. So let's first turn to Gatekeeper itself and have a look at the different options which we have here in the inspector. First, you see the different preview options. Uh, if you go into preview with uh, the preview set to off, that would be the normal preview and you see everything except for your Gatekeeper stack. Um, we are trying to 
we'll make everything which you will see on your web page as closely as we can in edit mode already so there is no need to preview gatekeeper itself so let's have a look at the other preview options the second one is the synchronize page where you can synchronize your um, uh, authenticator app and it looks like this that you have uh, this um, QR code and underneath is the secret key should you have to enter it manually. And by the way, as the text here above says, this will never be published. Nothing like what you see here will ever be accessible to an outside person. All right, then we have the secret key preview. This is where we can generate secret keys. These are generated locally on your computer, so nobody has seen them ever before you now. And you can click at this, on this button as much as you like and create, each time you create, a valid secret key. And once you're happy with the secret key you see, you just double click it, Command C for copy, and then you can paste it here into the secret key field. So that has brought us straight to the uh, Gatekeeper OTP section. OTP stands for one-time password. And the secret we just have filled in. Then for convenience's sake, you have two more fields which are used inside the Authenticator apps to actually categorize your different logins. The issuer is usually a domain name, like here example.com, we can just leave that, and then an account name. That can be a first name, a family name, or the, the name of a team, like finance. Okay. Then we have the gatekeeper ID, which helps you to uh, connect your gatekeeper instance to a stack keeper instance, like this one here. And uh, once we've put that on the page and you will see how it works, you will also see how the Gatekeeper ID uh, pulls them together. Then next up is the expiry, which is very important. Currently, and by default, the expiry is set to one day, but you can set it uh, to any number here below. And in units, you have the option of days, hours, or minutes. Next up is the redirect section. You can redirect after a login. Return means re redirecting it to the page which sent you or sent the visitor to the login page. Or you can actually specify a particular link to forward the visitor to after a successful login. You will see how this works once we are working with the Stack Keeper stack. The similarly uh, redirect on logout, you can basically use this, activate it, and then after a successful logout, redirect the visitor, for example, back to the login page or back to somewhere completely different. Good, then there are different messages. Uh, for example, the page title. This is what appears at the, as the uh, browser tab title or as the browser title if you, uh, the visitor is on that page, then you can customize the gatekeeper page itself, like with margins, for example, and with different backgrounds. Default is the radial background with uh, inner white and an outer light gray, but you can do that in any shape or form as you like. You have the selection of a solid background, then you just choose a particular color, like for example, a blue, Oh, this is a bit much, isn't it? Um, or you go to uh, for a linear gradient where you also have the start and end colors and you can also choose the different angles for the gradient. It all depends on your personal taste, like this, for example, and a dark purple. Okay, then also what you also can do is you can, instead of solid colors or gradients, uh, choose an image as a backdrop, which can also be a warehouse image, but you can also have it in the resources like I did here, and I'm just pulling this one over here so that you can see how it works with a backdrop image. And these uh, option buttons, you know them already from uh, the standard uh, stacks, uh, and uh, they can actually choose the tiling options and the fit options 
and how to position the backdrop image on the page. And as you can see here now, obviously the color is not really matching the dark uh, backdrop image. So you go basically straight away to gatekeeper input. And here you can choose the input color, which would be helpful if it were white, for example, could be any other color. Then we can change the color of these lines underneath each input field, which are also set to white now. And you can also choose the focus color. Focus color means that is the color to which a particular input field changes if the cursor is inside it. You can also change this to, for example, the same as the input color, then you don't have that feature enabled, basically. Yeah, that's basically the uh, background image and the input area uh, explained. Uh, one more thing about the input, you can also adjust the size of your input field from minuscule to enormous, depending on your layout. Default is five, something in the middle, but for many instances, this is already a little bit big. So I'll just set it to four. Here now, let's go back to, uh, to, the, uh, to the radial gradient. And obviously, this is still overridden by the image, but I just click on clear and the uh, linear, the radial gradient is visible again. And we quickly change the colors to a dark gray so that we can see something. All right. Then you obviously see the header and the footer section both work exactly the same. Um, just header instead of footer and vice versa. Okay, you can have a header image. This is made to so for you to have a small uh, icon on your page. Really, it's really, really small. I can demonstrate this by dropping in the gatekeeper icon. So you can see this here, for example. So we have now the gatekeeper icon here. And then we have the header text, which is for you free to, to edit. You can say this um, uh, just uh, whatever you like. And uh, if you want to change the text beyond what's available inside Gatekeeper, you can use everything which is available in here in this uh, edit window. Okay. This is also the header text. You can align the header text uh, just as you see fit or the header, including the icon, of course, uh, left, center and right. You can change its color. For example, for the text, we can change a different color to a different color just very quickly without using the dialog window. And um, yeah, what's there? What else is there? You can change the font style, for example, into italic and the font weight to bold. These are just shortcuts for you to use. Okay, let's just turn this off again and turn to the footer. The same thing applies here. Just also footer image, footer text. I drop in my gatekeeper icon. See, it is rather small. Nothing else is, uh, uh, everything will be basically reduced to that particular size. Then we have the footer text. Log in, please. Okay. That's our gatekeeper stack. Nothing which is overdone. We also, as you can see, um, purposefully did not implement any f a visual flim flam. This is just a straightforward login page, just so that your user has a interface which makes it clear what has to happen and um, which also doesn't use much uh, resources of uh, the visitor's device. So we avoid, for example, that the fan goes on or that the smartphone uh, uh, stutters or whatever. All right, let's now uh, have a look at what this is going to be like on a particular web page. And for that purpose, I've already prepared the, uh, the uh, publishing target and all these things for us so that we don't have to enter these in informations now into RapidWeaver. Um, so let's just 
go on republish all files and everything will just be being basically put onto our page inclusively of our platform stuff. By the way, one more top tip if you are using Gatekeeper, you see it is, takes up lots of space in edit mode. If you don't always want to scroll past it to your content, just mark Gatekeeper and click on hide. So from now on it is hidden and uh, if you need to change any of its options, you just mark it again and you click on show and you can go on. But this way we can just concentrate on our page layout basically. So uh, I have already um, published everything to our uh, web page and we're going to now have a look inside the web browser what we have created. Now we have our login and as you can see we have also the focus color and if I enter any code here it will be validated once I hit the last point or the last entry field and validate it. And if it's wrong, like in this case, I'm just as the visitor being put brought back to this login page. What we haven't done right now is we haven't synchronized our app yet. I'm quickly showing this right now. Let's now show Gatekeeper. And obviously we want to go to the sync page. We already have a secret. I demonstrated that earlier and I'm going to preview and now we see our QR code. I'm now using my smartphone and um, I'm opening the Authy app. Now this uh, needs to be synchronized. I tap on plus in the Authy app and then on scan QR code. The camera goes on and the scan has taken place. And we have now the, uh, the connection basically and uh, it is called example.com like the issuer and the account name is financed like we said here. I'm tapping on save and immediately it starts generating valid codes. So I can go over to the web browser and type in the code which Authy proposes, which is 2040264, which was a valid code. And we see the text which we put in underneath the gatekeeper stack. All right, that's already quite nice. But what else can we do with gatekeeper? I said earlier, we can use gatekeeper to manage multiple web pages uh, using the um, Stack Keeper stack. So let's just create one more page. Um, add stacks. Uh, I'm going to promote this one to the home, to be the home page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, s a small platform web page. That means I'm dropping in the platform settings stack and something like a title. What I'm putting in here will always be visible. So the, I just say always visible. All right. Um, maybe just use the one column stack in here so that we have a little bit of nicer uh, layout. Let's put this to 10 and offset one. What does this look like? Yeah, it's that's somehow acceptable. So now, now comes the stack keeper stack. As you can see, stack keeper only has one in entry field in the inspector and that is the gatekeeper ID, which is currently the same as what we're using on the gatekeeper page itself. Gatekeeper ID is also gatekeeper. So what we have here is, we can also drop this into the one column stack, is this divided into two sections. One 
is already labeled display when logged in. So everything which is put into this drop zone here will be displayed after a successful login. And everything which is in the second drop zone will be displayed um, will be displayed uh, when I'm not logged in. So what we could do intelligently is we could drop in a button into the second one, center this, and prompt the user to log in. And we will give it a link to the page which was formerly called home, but this is actually the login page. Let's call this login. All right, let's just quickly check whether our link has taken this. No, obviously not. Login, so. All right, we have a login button. So now there is something we want to display once we are logged in. And that will be this content. And we will call this confidential content. Okay. And we want to give our users the opportunity or the option to log out once they have read this fantastic text. And in order to do so, we are going to use Gatekeeper's sign out stack. Sign out means I can drop in anything uh, which is either a button or a link to facilitate the logout. So back to platform and I'm going to use the normal platform button to do exactly that. Let's also center it. Oh, that's it. Log out. That's this. Okay. And as you can see, the sign out stack has actually no um, entry field or customizability at all. It just works out of the box. So if I look at this, um, I would say I'm pretty sure this will work. So first of all, we will see always visible. We will be presented with the login button. Once we press this, it will forward us to the login page. Just here on the gatekeeper login page, we have to select return on the redirect on login. Good. You will now see what this return will do if we publish the page. So say uh, republish all files because we uh, changed the two main pages also in their meaning. So stuff will have to be considerably different. So now let's just refresh the page and we should actually see confidential um, content. The reason is we logged in successfully before, the, our session is valid for one day and obviously we haven't logged out. But as you can see, we are presented with the logout button, which we can use here. And we are immediately, once we have logged out, be put back to the non-visible uh, basically the confidential content has been removed from our page and we only see the stuff which is always visible as well as visible once we have logged out or while we're not logged in. So I'm clicking on login. I'm being forwarded to our gatekeeper login page. I am firing up Authy on my cell phone and Enter the current code, which is accepted because I didn't mistype, and I'm presented with the confidential content. All right, this basically concludes my intro to Gatekeeper. You have seen how Gatekeeper itself works and is configured. You have seen how we are using uh, Stack Keeper and we, we, how we are using the sign out button drop zone. <laughs> All right, 
Thanks for your interest in Gatekeeper. I hope this is something uh, which is useful for you. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy Rapid Weaver and Stacks. See you the next time. Bye bye.